Hi everyone, welcome back for part 2 of the tutorial on babies coming home. While the top tier patrons roll by, I'll give you a short summary of what you can expect in this part. We start straight away with a section that makes heavy use of the thumb over the side of the neck. But no panic, there is an alternative that manages to avoid the thumb altogether. The same goes for the last two bars. There are a few spicy chords in there, but there is also an easier way to play that whole section. No time to waste, off you go. Then we move to an F chord, the tricky bit, something quite similar to Chaplin in New Shoes. You start out with a thumb over the side of the neck. Before you panic, I will come up with an alternative in just a few minutes. Thumb over the side of the neck on the first fret, then ring finger, third fret, D string, middle finger, second fret, G string, index finger, first fret, B string. The first part is nothing too difficult. Basic uh, arpeggio pattern going on. B string together with the low E string, to the G string and then the bass note on the D string. Back to the B string. And we just round out the bass pattern, sticking to only the low E string and the D string. And now you're going to have to switch to F minor, which means dropping the middle finger and pulling down a bar across three strings, G string, B string and E string on the first fret. The thumb and the ring finger stay where they are. First fret, third fret. One, two, three, four, one. See, so first the chord, then the bass note on the first beat. Three, four, one. And then, as if it's not difficult enough already, pinky on the third fret, together with the bass note on the D string. Three, four. Luckily, it doesn't last too long, that bar, so chord in front of the beat, three, four, bass note, melody note, together with the pinky on the third fret, bass note, and removing the pinky again, picking the B string and E string, holding down the bar at the first fret. And then we move to a C chord, C, sus4, going to get to that in a second, but it is also possible to play this section on the F chord without using the thumb at all, going for a bar at all times, and it sounds like this. And it's the exact same thing, the only thing you really have to watch out for is that you never play the A string while holding down that full bar. So you then get a full bar across all six strings, adding the ring finger to the third fret on the D string and the middle finger to the second fret on the G string. Moving to the F minor chord is just removing the middle finger. Adding the pinky and removing the pinky. Everything else is the exact same thing, we're just getting rid of the thumb. So one more time that full section really slowly with the bar. And then we move to a C chord. Now, whatever option you picked, you are left with either a full bar or a partial bar at the end of that F minor chord. And you're going for a C chord with that same small bar on top. Now, it is common for people to sort of wiggle their way down until they have a bar of only those two top strings because that is what we need a c third fret on the a string and then a small bar only across the b string and e string but make sure that whatever option you pick you put down that new chord shape and you change the position of the wrist so if you're all the way up here with the thumb switch down to this position with the wrist all the way down here or else you won't get that c chord clean section on the C chord itself isn't too difficult. So holding down the bar, the first fret, together with the low A string, 
and then adding the middle finger to the second fret on the D string. And then you just lift up the bar, you keep pressure on the first fret on the B string and you get an open E string to go, so to go alongside with that. So from a small bar to an open E string and the first fret on top. To an A dominant chord, you keep the middle finger where it is, you just move the ring finger to the second fret on the B string, so you get open A string, second fret, open G string, second fret, open E string. Not too difficult to play, again, a little bit tense, but that will again disappear as soon as you connect everything. You start by playing the A string, B string and E string, and you hammer on to the first fret on the high E string, before moving to the D string. And you remove the index finger again, as simple as that. And you then complete the bass pattern, A string, D string, E string, D string. Those two bars together, C and A. That's what happens. I can't really remember if, if I addressed that alternating bass line at the end of the C chord. Moving to the low E string, I really can't remember if I just explained that, but as in the first uh, few bars, you have to alternate between the A string and the E string. And those were the next four bars. Let me play those four bars all the way through, starting from the F chord. I play through it, I think I completely missed out on that alternating bass line on the C chord. But now you know, that has to be there as well. We're ready to complete the verse, or at least the first verse, uh, with the very last section. And again, we're going to use the thumb over the side of the neck. That's all that happens. It's perfectly possible to use the index finger instead of the thumb. All you need is the second fret on the low E string, second fret on the G string. So you can either use the thumb, or use the index finger, whatever works for you. Then we shift up towards, let's say, third position. You're going to use the ring finger on the fifth fret, middle finger, fourth fret on the D string, pinky, fifth fret on the G string. And a really classic chat pattern with an open B string in there. First start with the A string to an open B string, and then with the thumb pick to the D string. And then you pick the fifth fret on the G string. This might mess with your head a little bit. You're moving to a thicker string, and we always ex expect a lower sounding note on that string. And now this time, the B string sounds lower than what we are playing on the G string. This might mess with your fingering a little bit in the beginning, especially in the picking hand. You want a higher sounding note, you're going to reach for a thinner string. Stick to this. Make sure that you get this right in your fingers the first time around. A string, B string, D string, G string. Back to the A string and then you drop down the index finger on the third fret on the B string, and we head back to the B string, and this time it will sound higher than the G string. See, so you get this lovely ascending scale without basically doing too much in the fretting hand. Again, I'm sort of forgetting that you also have to alternate in the bass line. So you can stick to just the D chord, or you can add the alternating bass down below again. Just by alternating as we did before the ring finger from the A string to the E string. That is the full part. Those two D chords back to back. So this is D over F sharp, the first one, by the way. To 
a lovely G dominant ninth voicing, you end up with middle finger on the third fret, low E string, ring finger, third fret on the D string, index finger, second fret on the G string. And you start by playing an open E string alongside the bass note on the low E string. Melody note on the E string, G string, bass note on the D string. And then you drop down the pinky on the 3rd fret, so you can see this is a busy place at the moment, 3rd fret on the B string. And you complete the bass pattern, just low E string, B string, one more time. In a second I'm going to give you an alternative for this chord because the next one is really difficult and we can solve that all in one go. So you move up from the D chord. An A flat dominant ninth chord, that's a long name, ring finger. 4th fret on the low E string, pinky 4th fret on the D string, middle finger 3rd fret on the G string, index finger 1st fret on the B string. Not an easy chord shape. Going to give you an alternative for this one in just a second. Tommy just plays the G string, B string together with the low E string, alternates to the D string. Then let's go of all the fingers apart from the ring finger and he shifts that one down to the 3rd fret. And that is the end of the 1st verse, so just that difficult chord, open strings, 3rd fret E string, open D string. Together with that G dominant ninth chord, full verse and this chord really isn't that easy. What can you do? Play that G dominant ninth chord, play that as a bar, bar across all six strings on the third fret, adding the middle finger on the fourth fret on the G string and the pinky fifth fret on the B string. So you play B string, G string, bass note, remove the pinky, back to the B string. And then just move up one fret and just play E string together with the G string and the thumb pick to the D string. And if I were you, I would then just release tension on the bar altogether, play those two open strings, G string and B string, and the bass line just third fret and an open string. This will make it a little bit easier to switch to the next chord. You could also stay in, the, in that bar. That would work as well, but it's a little bit easier to switch to the next chord if you use those open strings. So the full alternative. end back up on the first chord and it's almost a full repeat. So those last four bars, maybe first the alternative. If you want to get rid of that stretch, the original version. Sounds a little bit more colorful. That was the full verse all the way through. Let me play those last eight bars one more time all the way to the end and then a full recap of the first verse. First from bar nine all the way to where we just were. Let's have a look. time with all the alternatives. Bar on the F chord. No thumb. Bar. And 
and back to the first chord. Those are all the alternatives in the second part of the, the verse. That was the full verse and the good news is most of what you are now about to play in the rest of the verses is mostly repetition. You already know a good chunk of the tune. Let me try and play through it one more time really slowly and then I'll give you some time to practice. repetition. But before we head there, get all of this down, get all of this really well embedded into your fingers and I'll see you again soon for part two. See you there. Mm -hmm.